the deadliest catalyst, 200 years after humanity entered the fray of galactic life. A rare and powerful omnivorous species from a throwaway cluster in a throwaway arm of the galaxy that ended up being one of the most powerful species in the galaxy. The largest fleets, the biggest army, the greatest economy, and the most numerous colonies. Their technological advancement, fractious nature, and factional warfare made them both an awe-inspiring sight and a note of ridicule. They had all this tech that blew our best ships away, yet they chose more often than not to use it against themselves. The only real time we ever got to face their cannons was when they were helping us out. My name is Kal Thar, 17th son of Clan Oris. I am a member of the Draconis species, essentially a humanoid version of a dragon without wings, for lack of any better explanation. We are carnivores, reptilians, and average around eight feet in height, sometimes larger. It was my species that made first contact with humanity, introducing them to the galactic community. It was one of the strangest meetings, but most peaceful ones. Humanity was operating in a far corner of the galaxy, conducting research, scanning planets for resources or points of interest, and generally just mucking about pretty much just like everyone else does at the start of their galactic sojourn. Meeting them was about as much an accident as an accident could get. Our scout ship came into the system with faults in its engineering after an emergency FTL jump to escape an angry space manta ray. The human ship was approaching the system's gas giant to start scans. It was the space equivalent of a near miss. Our ship managed to regain control after minor mechanical failures caused by the stresses of emergency FTL jump set the engine room ablaze and missed the human ship by mere inches before coming to a relative stop some 200 clicks away. At four times the speed of sound, it was a close call, but even at that speed, shields would have made sure it would have been little more than a space fender bender. Our ship faced some mechanical issues and was surprised when a few moments later the human ship arrived and began repairs on what was an obviously large hole on the starboard side. I am told that, on their home planet, situations like this with automobiles and other vehicles would have been very, very different. So we were, needless to say, very much relieved. Repairs were quickly completed. Our ship was unable to return home under its own power, so the humans offered a dry dock in a nearby system for repairs. A feast was had, a friendship formed, and so it had been since. We mostly worked apart from each other, mostly just engaging in tech swaps, trade deals, and offering up joint colonies, or simply helping each other out. Recently, however, we fell on hard times, with a galactic superpower having gotten a bit big for its boots and declaring war on the galaxy. An alliance between the Draconian Triumvirate, the Akani Hive Worlds, the Human Alliance and the Valaris Imperium was quickly struck, resulting in an almost immediate pushback and half the superpower's fleet being wiped out in the first engagement. Human war machines used by all four Alliance members were what turned the tide primarily humanity's carriers, as they called them. Even though at the time I was far too young, by three Earth years, for military service, I refused to take no for an answer after an attack on Salaris Prime. Two years later I was in a Decurion squad on the Outer Rim territories, helping to deal with our galactic piracy problem while the war raged ever onward. Like I said, too young for frontline service, as were my squad mates, who just like me refused any no given by our superiors and demanded service. We were placed under the leadership of grizzled sergeants and former retirees to give us a modicum of discipline, but also guarantee an actual fighting ability needed in a war. We were mere hours away from a raid on a pirate base in a nearby star system, when for the first time in my short life, I saw it. It was a human, but it was very small. We were standing on a loading dock, 
being barked at by our staff sergeant, telling us to check, recheck, and triple check our weapons. In the background, a legion of humans, Draconis and Valaris fighters, bombers and dropships were lined up, readying for the upcoming battle. Twenty or so, mostly, far more than was normally needed for a pirate raid, and far, far fewer than was being used on the front lines. Draconids have exceptional hearing, even in the open noise of a large, bustling hangar in space. So when I heard a sound that did not belong, both I and my squad mates noticed. It was a giggle, a soft, high-pitched noise of happiness and contentment. I looked around, ignoring my sergeant's barking, and tried to find this strange noise. And there it was. It was a human, but many, many times smaller than the other humans. It was female, dressed in some kind of pink loose garment with flower patterns on it, and she was sitting in a corner of the hangar by some boxes fiddling with something. I looked carefully using my beast eyes and saw what they were. She was surrounding herself with strangely dressed toys, which I knew to be called teddies of various colours and compositions. To this day, I have no damn idea what came over me. A demon possession. A strange instinct I never knew existed. A psionic suggestion, maybe. Who the bugger knows? All I know is I broke rank, and in an almost zombie-like state, casually trotted away towards her. I was indeed yelled at by my sergeants for breaking rank, but I never heard a thing as my heavy footsteps clanged away on the steel-lined floors. Within moments I was looming over the tiny creature, and every human in the vicinity was instantly alerted and ready to fight. Humans were very well known for being genocidally protective of their juveniles, so my presence was undoubtedly raising a few eyebrows. After a few seconds, she finally noticed my presence and slowly looked up to me. I could sense a tinge of fear in her eyes. I don't know why. I don't know how. I just don't know. Without thinking, considering, or even questioning it. I raised my hand, put out the second of the four fingers on my right hand, then gently pressed its tip, very gently against the tip of her nose then let out the word, Boop. The response was immediate, and I was overcome by a strange but delightful feeling as she giggled in response, her cheeks turning a shade of red. It was from here I was unable to wipe the smile off my face. As I turned away and returned to my post in line, every human had a smirk on their faces some trying to stop themselves from laughing, and as I walked away I could very clearly hear a sigh of relief coming from nearby, most likely the child's mother. Unknowingly, I had just discovered humanity's single most dangerous weapon, cute. This manifested itself in a new wave of pride and delight that overcame me. This cuteness was causing chemical reactions in my brain. The images of the child's smile and sounds of her cute giggling were flashing through my mind. I was overcome with a new instinct, a new drive. She must be safe. A voice in my head continued to relentlessly repeat as I stood in line. Barely moments before I was due to depart, she appeared next to me and tugged gently at my tool belt. She smiled up at me, and had an outstretched arm holding one of her teddies. Here, he'll keep you safe, came her adorable little high-pitched voice, still unable to stop smiling, bearing my rows of sharp, shark-like teeth. She seemed unfazed, and started to dance in happiness as I used a carabiner clip to secure the toy to my tool belt next to a handheld plasma cutter. I gently patted her on her head and ushered her towards her waiting mother, a decorated Alliance communications officer. She gave us a salute, as did many others, as we quickly filed into our assigned dropship and met with a small escort cruiser that would carry us to our destination. On the way to our intended target, 
I could still hear this voice in my head. I picked up the teddy and carefully inspected it, while my squadmates watched. The smile on my face had changed from a delighted, happy smirk to a sinister grin of sadistic, murderous glee. They must all be safe. They must all be safe. They will be safe. The voice now clouded my thoughts with images of both human children and draconis juveniles, newborns still in their eggs. I could hear their heartbeats thundering in my ears. Valaris children and their laughter as they conducted experiments on their homeworld's crystal formations, and the eggborn of the insectoid hive we now called friends. I was not alone. This cuteness was spreading. I noticed my squadmates likewise becoming agitated. Claws brought to bear, teeth showing, tails flitting about in impatience and anger, breathing becoming stronger more calculated. A pheromone scent Draconis used in our ancient days to mark a need for aggression was now wafting through the cabins, air aboard the escort cruiser. I tried for a brief moment to calm myself down. It was even affecting the humans now, as I could hear a form of anger and frustration come across the comms as our human fleet crew announced our arrival in the star system. What followed was a merciless, barbaric massacre of one of the most notorious pirate gangs in the entire sector, our escort cruiser, now flooded with a rage not ever conceived before this moment. We blasted out of the ship's hangar and caught them completely off guard, with my dropship charging forward into the pirate's flagship. The escort cruiser, heavily outgunned, persevered, and took out a ship twice its size with a brutal forward cannon shot that blew its target's bow clear off. Using plasma cutters and pressured suits, we poured out of our stricken dropship now smashed into a battleship hull and began tearing into it, gaining access to the ship's corridors. Once in, we were overcome by a sense of barbaric rage and let out a massive roar of carnal anger that reverberated through the ship. Corridor by corridor, room by room, we charged our way through the flagship like wild dogs tearing apart a lone rabbit, ripping pirates' arms clean off their bodies, tossing them aside like toys and smashing doors clean out of their holding mechanisms. The guns we had were used well and a few hundred pirate scum were laid to waste by our rifles' plasma fire. Most casualties were due to us grabbing them and ripping them apart limb from limb, of course. But by the gods did it feel good. Within less than an hour, twenty enemy ships lay barren of crew, and the pirate leader was in custody. Having been hit by a human crew who caught him off guard in a mess hall, we wasted no time in throwing his fat corpse into the station's incinerators. The mission accomplished. Our high of rage and anger suddenly vanished, and the delight from earlier had dissipated, as if we did good. But it was calm time now. The voice in my head had silenced, replaced by the barking orders of my radio set, and we simply got back to work. As if nothing happened, I still had that teddy strapped to my tool belt. Talking to a human medic some years later and asked to explain this situation, the only response was very much enlightening. If something you find makes you love it, you will do anything to protect it. What you experienced was simply the instinct of protection, to keep safe, to defend. That smile was likely the trigger for that response. Cute is just a very, very potent catalyst for triggering this instinct. Humans have cute in spades, as do any species, especially juveniles. All species have a desperate need to protect their young and ensure the future. The cuteness you experienced was simply a catalyst for an explosion of hidden or suppressed emotions. It is one of the reasons humans are so protective of our young ones. They're just so damn cute. Likely the situation I was in, 
on the verge of engaging in combat against a vastly superior enemy, caused a reaction that severe. Emotional charge from combat preparations had left me vulnerable to this chemical reaction. And that cute little smile just set something off. Or something. Instinct does not explain the voices in my head, the pheromonal release or the images I saw flashing in my eyes, especially since I barely knew these processes, but I would never question it. It has become an unwritten rule in the alliance across the stars. If you see the cute, boop, the snoot. Seventy years later, I am now a field commander for my own legion in the Draconian Triumvirate. I still have that teddy bear on my tool belt.